we're going to follow up 2019 after a very successful 2018. We have a full slate of tournaments scheduled at Green Pond. We started in January with the Striped Bass Challenge fishing tournament that we've hosted now. This was our third year. Uh, the neat thing about this tournament is it raises money through canned food donations for meals to our local food banks. And this year the uh, organization, the Striped Bass Challenge, uh, set a record uh, in their in their four year history of events with 57,000 pounds of uh, canned food items. In fact, it took two box trucks from the Civic Center to load up all the donated items and, and take them back. And what's uh, to be distributed throughout our community in the food banks, I think they, the numbers I got back were that it put somewhere in the neighborhood of 50,000 meals into the community. A lot of those canned foods that were bought and donated by the anglers were bought in Anderson County. So it was like it, it was a double benefit to the community. We're continuing to work with that organization. We're still working out. We've got dates for a 2020 tournament and we're working on a multi-year agreement which would bring them back beyond 2020. We've got the Mossy Oak Fish in Bassmaster High School open. It'll be our second year hosting this high school event. Bass has a high school division that fishes nationwide. And with the first event uh, of their schedule this year, we, we're gonna run about 200 boats, uh, high school division from across the Southeast and Eastern United States. And the teams, the top finishing teams from this event will qualify for their high school national championship. The second weekend of March, we're gonna host a one day American Bass Anglers uh, Georgia Division Tournament. The folks um, that, that run that event, the director, um, feels like he gets a better experience when they come to Anderson and Green Pond than when they fish on the Georgia side of the lake. So they're going to bring the Georgia Division across to Anderson County and fish out of our facility, which I think is a, it, it'll be a smaller tournament, but I think it's a testament to the success that we've had and how we do things that people have a great experience when they come here. So we'll host them on Saturday, March the 9th. On Sunday, March the 10th, we're gonna have a one day high school event with the Bass Federation, the TBF, and that'll bring uh, probably 75 to 100 boats from, uh, from all over the Southeast United States. Now, one of the neat things about that event is we actually signed a contract back in the fall with the Bass Federation to host their high school national championship which will bring roughly a thousand anglers here in June of 2021. So this is a state qualifier that leads into their championships, but obviously the relationship we have with TBF, we're leading up to hosting their high school world finals in June of 2021. The month of April will start out with the Bassmaster Elite Series, April 4th through the 7th. We've had three Bassmaster Classics now on Lake Hartwell, two since 2015 one in 15, one in 18. The one in 2015 obviously set the record for the coldest classic on record. 2018 set the attendance record for the most uh, attended of all time. And we've never had the Bassmaster Elite Series here. The anglers that make up the Elite Series, you know, are all trying to get to the Bassmaster Classic, but we never had the Elite Series. And so this is an opportunity to host the Elite Series at Green Pond for the first time. So we're very excited about that. They'll come in and register on Wednesday April the 3rd. The tournament will be the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. Out at Green Pond we'll do the morning launch, the afternoon weigh-ins, all from Green Pond on Thursday and Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday, uh, the, the 6th and 7th, in addition to having the launch and weigh-ins at Green Pond, there'll also be an outdoor expo from, um, from about noon to 5 p.m. each day and it will we'll have local vendors and we'll have food food and beverage vendors out there we'll have local uh craft makers and local vendors there as well as obviously bass's normal sponsored um vendors which you know include people like toyota carhartt and uh, your boat manufacturers and things like that we have the the fishers and men national championship we've never had them here before in anderson county and lake hartwell so we're very excited about having them that's april 11th 12th and 13th. We have Palmetto Boat Center High School Trail. They run about 200 boats. There'll be a lot of youth anglers back in our community. The local fishers and men are gonna have a tournament out there in April as well. 
We roll into May and we're hosting a new event. Depending on where you're at, we say crappy or crappie. And uh, so here in, uh, in Anderson, we always call it cra crappy. But Crappie USA, an organization out of Kentucky, they're going to come in and uh, host a, a crappie tournament here at Lake Hartwell the first weekend of May. And that event will actually have a, a youth uh, element to it. They're going to hold a youth fishing rodeo over at Chris Taylor Park at the Civic Center on Saturday morning. I think that's May the 4th. And there'll be a one-day tournament uh, associated with that. And they'll weigh in at Green Pond and fish on Lake Hartwell. Uh, the neat thing about that organization is it's a three-year contract that we put together with them. It's a one-day event this spring. We'll do a two-day event in the spring of 2020, and then in 2021 we'll host their championship, and it's called the, the Crappy Classic. So we'll have, we'll have them in 2021, and we had a chance to attend their event this past fall when we were putting the deal together, and it's attended by a lot of folks from around the country, a lot of states get it, you know, a lot of anglers from a lot of states. And so we're, we're look forward to having them here in a couple of years. But we have a one day event with them in May. And then um, a couple other more localized events in the month of May. And then we sort of, we sort of tail it off after about mid May with respect to the weather, the heat, the increased pleasure boat traffic on the lake also, as well as we try to maintain the respect and probably the toughest balance we have to do here as, ba as balance the lake for our local anglers and local organizations as well as the national organizations that we bring in. We've got two uh, super tournaments with FLW in September. They're two-day events that'll bring anglers from multiple states in to fish for a couple of days and then also hosting a two-day championship with American Bass Anglers in early October and then in November and December we'll have bass back in town for the Bass Nation Championship if you remember was here in October of 2017 and I'll argue to this day it's one of the most diverse events that we have in our county from the standpoint that it will bring anglers from 48 states and nine countries here 59 boats 118 anglers and we'll have them here for you know a good period of time in the month of October and November and then um, it's it hasn't been announced but bass will be back in December for another championship we're still putting the details on that one but there's one more championship that we'll have to kind of round out 2019 and before Green Pond I think the lake's a great lake and it's a great fishery and it performs extremely well but a lot of people didn't know about it we've always had a supportive community to the lake and to fishing in general I think Green Pond has been the glue that put it all together uh, Green Pond gave us a facility something that we could all be proud of and work behind and 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 bring people together but what it also did was bring a very supportive fishing community together with a lake that fishes extremely well and we were able to bring organizations and groups of people in to be able to see that and I think it's only helped our community grow. It's a true recreation area for people now it's not recreation in the sense that you go out there and there's ball fields and there's stick and ball aspects to it but I mean I can't tell you how many people I know that go out there and have picnics and go out there and just walk go out and watch the sunset and those are just basic things. The money that is invested in these fishing tournaments from the organization and angler standpoint is, is generates revenue back into our community, whether it's through overnight stays in hotels, meals in the restaurants, um, anglers that come in and buy bait and tackle and supplies while they're here, gas that's bought. And even when somebody comes in, if they have an issue with the boat, or their truck being able to go to the local Toyota dealer or the local um, marine center and have work done on their boat through the tax dollars that are paid. That's money that goes right back into our community from somebody that doesn't live here, which keeps our tax base down for the local people. We've got some numbers that suggest the economic impact of Green Pond, not just to Anderson County, but the upstate of South Carolina exceeds $50 million. Since Green Pond's opened in December of 2014 and it I mean it doesn't just impact us here when we have tournaments here in Anderson it does impact the other areas the demand has increased each year but but the pot of money has not increased so what's happened is 
we have to be choosy about the events that we bring in and we have to investigate those to make sure that the events that we're bringing in are making the biggest impact for our community. Otherwise, we're having to either put them into another year or reschedule them for a different time or just frankly just decline the opportunity altogether. We've been fortunate in that, um, that we haven't had to decline too many. We've been able to move them around and schedule differently. We're at this point, we're like one contract away from being booked through 2022. And so now we're even looking to build beyond 2022 now when we're out meeting with organizations and scheduling future events. It's a facility that's well lit. It's well maintained. The county's done a tremendous job maintaining Green Pond. We've got the, the construction project ongoing now. It's, it's scheduled really any day now to wrap up with having the full service bathrooms on site, the increased dock space. The county's installed security cameras out there. We're located at 110 Federal Street in the ground floor of the Anderson Arts Center. You can also access us on the web at visitanderson.com and uh, our doors are always open. You can stop in and see us. We have information. The county has information. We work very closely together, but we're always excited to talk about Green Pond and the impact that it makes on our community.